Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called La Corsa, the Grand Prix game. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to that official Kickstarter project page. There's going to be a link down underneath this video in the description section, and also up in the top corner of your screen, you can follow that link to the official Kickstarter project page, find out more information, and hopefully consider backing the project. La Corsa is from designer Mark Haskell. And this is a game about uh, going through a Grand Prix. You have your car or cars. You can take control of more than one car potentially and also work with teammates if you want to. And you are trying to race along a track by playing cards from your hands that represent trying to pass the other cars. You actually are going to have a physical uh, wooden track along with miniature cars to play with. And then you're going to have cards from your hand that you're going to play to influence your cars in challenges. You'll challenge the other cars in order to pass them by trying to get higher numbers. Numbers. You can try and play special effects cards that have different um, effects on the, the racetrack as well. All of these different things. So let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype version of the game. So what you see in the final version may be different from what you see here. Just keep that in mind. Then we're going to come back. I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, folks, I'm going to give you a quick overview of La Corsa, the Grand Prix card game. This is a competitive game for two to six players. Now, depending on how many players you have and how you want to set things up, each player is going to take control of either one car, which is going to happen if you're in a multiplayer game with more than two or three players. But if you're playing with fewer players, then each player can take control of multiple cars. There's actually three different colors. You have the uh, the green and red here with uh, different stripes on each of the different uh, uh, each car of the same color. And you actually have white ones that I have off to the side. So this setup that I have here could actually be used for a four-player game where every player takes control of one car and has one set of hand of cards. Or it could be for a two-player game where each of the two players has two cars that they're going to control with separate hands of cards. And you'll notice that I have the little uh, token cards out here to remind people what colors cards are controlling. And also every player is going to have a hand of 13 cards. You're actually, as the other part of the setup, you're going to uh, make a deck of cards with 13. These are extras right here. But you're going to have 13 cards per player that's in the game of each of the different suits of cards. You're going to mix those up. So you'll have, in other words, if you were in a... Uh, a four-player game, you would ha or four-car game, let me be more specific on that, four cars, then e you're going to take four suits of cards, all of the cards for each of those suits, shuffle them all together, and then deal those cards out to each car, which again could mean that one player is going to have multiple hands of cards for controlling multiple cars. Now let me go ahead and show you some of these cards just so you know what I'm talking about, and uh, we'll get more into the gameplay itself in a moment. But you see here you have multiple uh, different suits. They all have uh, not only different colors, or, but also different symbols, which are all car related, like a steering wheel, like a drive shaft, cam shaft, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the gear shifter, that type of stuff. And then you have different numbers on the card. So the numbers go from 1 to 12, and I believe car, uh, numbers 4 through 12 are just that. They are just for the number that you're going to use during the game. The number 12 card has champion written on it because it is the, uh, the ultimate card, the highest value card. However, the numbers 1 through 3 cards uh, in each of the suits are actually called extend cards. Now these could be played for their number, but if you have just won a challenge, which we're going to get back to in a minute, I'll explain all the details on that, and you have an empty space in front of you, you can actually play an extend card to extend your gap from the other player. So remember, this is a racing car game, and you want to try to uh, widen the gap between you and the other players as much as possible. The extend card is going to allow you to do that. The other special cards you have are that don't, does not have a number are the red line cards. The, again, in each of the suits. And the red line card, you're actually going to play this together with another card. On its own, or if you accidentally play it with a, another red line card, which is an illegal move, they do nothing. But if you add it to another one of the numbered cards, so for instance, if I played it down together with the 12 card, that would make it 14. It gives plus two to that total amount of the other card. So you do it if you want to really give yourself a boost. 
Now, at the start of the game, players are going to decide the pull position for the game. You're going to do that by each player taking one of their random uh, cards that they ha got in their hand at the beginning of the game and place a card face down in front of them. They have to do this for each one of their cards. So if one player is controlling multiple cards, they have to do it for each of their cards. And remember, they have to keep their hands separate as best they can. Um, you can also play a red line card down now if you want, even if it is just for pole position. Once everyone has selected their card, you're all going to flip them over sim simultaneously and see who has the highest number. The highest number is going to take the pole position, and then everyone is going to line up according to second, third, fourth, uh, most rank, and so on if you're playing with more cards. There is a die that comes with the game which you will use to roll if there is a tie between multiple players. Now, once you figure out who has what position on the board, then it's time to officially start the game. And the game is going to start with whoever is furthest back in the pack. And you are going to have to challenge the next person in line on the racetrack in order to get ahead of them swap by swapping places with them. So in this particular case, the red striped car uh, is in the... Uh, back position so that player has to challenge the green solid colored car so that player each player that is involved in the challenge is going to play a card from their hand or two cards if they want to do the red line and they're going to do that face down in front of them so solid colored green card here is going to play a card down you do this in secret and simultaneously when both players have made their selection you'll flip it over uh, in this case, the 12 clearly wins, so that player, the, the challenging player, is going to win and is going to swap places with that car on the track. Now, if you won that challenge, you get to per uh, proceed with one more challenge against the next car in front of you. Basically, you get two attempts at this. Um, if you succeed on the first challenge, you get a second attempt. If you fail at any point, though, your turn is going to be over. Now, as I mentioned before as well, you need to remember that if you successfully get up to the front of the pack um, and there's an empty space in front of you, you can actually play one of your extend cards in order to widen the gap in front of you, which is going to be very important. But regardless of that, whenever um, after the leading race car has extended, discarded, or completed a uh, second pass, then uh, one whole race lap has been completed. The next lap starts with whoever is in last place again. The gameplay is going to continue like this with players jockeying for position, going down the track uh, bit by bit, swapping positions as the game progresses. You're going to keep doing this until one of the players has run out of cards to play. When all of one player's cards have been used and discarded, that is that signals that the race is over. Each race card finishes whatever turn it has remaining, and then it ends with the leader. At that point, you're going to add up your score. If you ended up uh, with your car in first place, you get nine points. If you're in second place, you get six points. Fourth place is, or I'm sorry, third place is four points, and fourth place is three points. If you play with five or six uh, cars, then it goes two points and one points, respectively. Now, you can just do one race if you really want to, but the game is actually going to come with scoring sheets, which will allow you to keep track for championship matches. You can actually uh, play the game over a total of seven races, keeping track of your score each time, and whoever has the most points at the end of the Grand Prix is going to be the full winner of the game. Also, note that you can play in teams as well. That's another alternate way to play the game. There's other variants, too. For instance, the most interesting variant um, is one where there's possible that there's going to be an accident out on the track. Now, normally, if there's a tie in a challenge, ties go to whoever is the defending player. In other words, it's your turn. You've decided to challenge someone in front of you. They have the benefit of the tie. However, with this variation, if anyone played a red line, or if both players played a red line card in that particular challenge, there's a chance that you're going to be involved in an accident. So, so what you're going to do is roll the die and then consult a chart in the rule book, which will tell you what the result is going to be on that die. So for instance, if you roll it a one or two, both race cars are removed from the board and the gap remaining is uh, closed by moving all the other racers forward. Um, and then the rest of the race is completed thematically ahead of that accident. If you roll it a three, the challenging race car is out of the race and collects no points for the race. If it's a four, the defending race car is out of the race, and on a five or six, nothing happens. The game continues as normal. And there's some other variants you can use as well, but that's just uh, one of the more interesting ones. So that is La Corsa, the Grand Prix card game. Let's get to my final thoughts. 
Well, first off, while there are a lot of racing board games out there, it seems to me that very few of them actually cover Grand Prix. So that immediately says that you should try and take notice of this game if you are a fan of Grand Prix racing. Also, the fact that this is a game that is not just a card game or just have a, like a roll and move type game, the fact that it's mixing different types of elements together should also have you take a, uh, notice of it. That you have this track, that you have these different miniature cars to actually um, utilize in the game, but you are fueling them, no pun intended, with the cards that you have in your hand. And that's the thing. Uh, this game is definitely a hand management game where you are trying to outwit your opponent um, and uh, sort of trying to deduce what cards they may have in hand based on what you have in hand and what's already been played, and then trying to outpace them. Deciding the right time to use your red line cards, um, th hoping that you have the extend card in hand at the time, but knowing that sometimes you may just have to sacrifice that on a previous turn if you want to uh, fail a challenge in order to save up for one later to get better pole position later. There's all these different factors that come into mind. In fact, just deciding what position you want to be in at the start of the game can be incredibly critical, knowing that you have a limited set of cards to use and to utilize to play with for the rest of that match. And also the game you know, can be played as a single match, it can be played over multiple matches, and the benefit of the game is that you have all this depth, right? You are, um, you've got your hand of cards, you're trying to figure out how to use them in the best way possible, but it's still very easy to learn. It's very easy to set up, and it is very fast to play a race. Now, if you play over the multiple races, up, up to seven races for a championship match, that can take a little longer, but it's still not that long, and you're learning and getting better as you progress through the races. So it is definitely something that I would recommend if you want to get the full game experience. And it's all about just outwitting your opponents. You know, the whole simultaneous action selection is a game mechanism that I enjoy that I've seen in a lot of different games, and it's utilized well here in La Corsa as well. So if any of those different things appeal to you, if you like racing games, if you especially like Grand Prix racing, if you like simultaneous action selection, hand management, um, just trying to outwit and outthink your opponent, if you're a casual gamer or a hardcore gamer, I would definitely recommend checking out La Corsa, the Grand Prix game. It's going to be up on Kickstarter. You can follow the links at the top corner of your screen or also down in the description section of the video. That's going to take you to the official Kickstarter project page. Find out more information than I could possibly tell you here and hopefully consider backing the project. That is La Corsa from designer Mark Haskins. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.